So driveway deconstruction begins right now. So Lester had someone come by with a track hoe, I think that's the right term. And in order to begin to reconstruct, we gotta get the rest of it cleared out. So here it is. Guess I'm uh, staying home for the next two weeks and not leaving. Pretty sure that's the case. So in all seriousness, Lester's plan is to replace the driveway culvert with a cattle guard. There's a lot that has to go into this and the cattle guard is just what we drive over. It's not what goes in the bottom. So this is the beginning of it. And I'll be honest, I don't fully understand all of the dynamics of it. Uh, <laughs> so this is a Lester project. That's a lot of dirt. They officially will not be doing any driving here. Holy moly. Folks. Hey folks, Lester here. And um, boy, we're back at it. We are back at it. Um, I wanna turn my camera on and show you what's happening here with our culvert issue. Well, non-issue because we no longer have any kind of a culvert. And uh, the first cattle guard project that I've ever undertook by myself. Now I've done several cattle guards uh, growing up, that's all we used to ever do is cattle guards. We couldn't afford, <laughs> we could not afford culverts, culverts, afford culverts. Look at this. I'll tell you what, we're blessed to know a guy who knows a guy who has a tractor. And uh, we did have to pay him a few dollars to come out and dig that thing out of the ground for us. I want to show you the space that he left and then show you what I'm going to do. Step one, I'll just come on. So first of all, I don't know how many years this thing has been here, but it is a jumbled mess. It's a heap. This is a heap, what we call a heap right now. All right, and this here is what we are left with. All right, where do I start? Paul came out. That's the pond guy. You've all met Paul, and he's going to address that sooner rather than later. Because my friends, I told Paul, I said, if that thing ends up giving out and giving way and breaking, I says, all of that's gonna come rushing over here. And it could hurt somebody, it could kill somebody, it could hurt and kill one of our animals. Paul has to address that. That's a pond guy issue. And uh, I like Paul, I like Chuck. Those are the two owners there at that outfit. They've done a lot of stuff for us. They've always been fair. But I will say that the, the this pond has been quite the flop. Uh, don't get me started. Let's just hope that we can get that fixed the right way. And um, because right now that scares me. A lot of you guys have sent us different suggestions that I've actually forwarded over to Paul that I think are brilliant ideas to avoid that ever happening again. But, uh... I don't want to act like I know what I'm doing because I don't. So I'm just going to hope that Paul and team can get over here and get that thing taken care of. But that's going to be a Paul the Pond Guy issue. Let's not worry about that right now. We have bigger fish to fry. We have no access to our, to our home. This is our driveway. And this is where the culvert used to be that has all washed out in our most recent flood. I say flood. It didn't flood anything around here. We, we did not get a flood. We got our pond filled up, but all of that rain happened in the course of an hour. It dropped three and a half inches of rain in one hour, and that wiped out all of this. So our culvert has been removed, and what I'm going to do is build a, a cattle guard. Now, just like I talked about in my video this morning, 
Um, I've done cattle guards. I can picture a cattle guard being here. I have an idea for how it's going to look. I'm going to have to start off first with building me some good solid walls. And then I will put down bags of concrete as a floor. And that's going to be my first step in any of this. I want to get that done before we get any more rain and before any more dirt can cave off our hill and fall into there. I'm also going to come by and rope off this area so animals don't walk through here. Now, they can't come this way. I don't think they would come from that way. They're not that dumb. Uh, they would realize real fast. Animals are, believe it or not, animals are very sure-footed. And they know where they're stepping. Um, but uh, we'll address that side over there as well. You know, I was telling Jamie, when it rains, it pours. That expression we always use. And that could never be more true. We just got back from Illinois. And listen, this is not, this is not, what they say, they're little, that's the world's smallest fiddle. Playing an I, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. So sorry. No one's trying to feel sorry for anybody here. We're very blessed. But uh, the timing of this was not ideal. I will say that. The timing of this was not ideal. You guys know that what I always try to do is do a project, save a couple of months, do a project, save a couple of months. And so we end up, you know, we had to pay to have a fellow do the greenhouse. And then I saved the month and then I did the back fence. I haven't talked much about that, but I, this has consumed me. This here has consumed me, okay? But my back fence is done. And I wanted to save and my next project be this side fence. That was, that was what Lester's plan was. Well, guess what? They would not move. So I got to go around them. That is Tat's way of imposing his will on me. Oh my gosh, I'm surrounded by these big silly birds. I'm trying to go slow. Why don't they feel special? Don't they just feel so special? <laughs> I love them, but my gosh, they're hard. So this cattle guard project, I'm gonna do it in sections like let's just say step one step two and step one might be the hardest part of the entire thing well really step one is already done the culvert has been removed and the fellow with the backhoe sort of kind of cleaned out the uh coffin shaped area that will be the uh the drain that's going to go under my driveway under my cattle guard so really, if you think about it, I'm gonna work on step two, and it's gonna be putting walls and maybe even some kind of a floor before I ever deal with any of the, the top part of the cattle guard. This is just the beginning of many trips to McCoy's. I love this place. I don't really know why anybody, I'm just gonna say this, I'm not trying to put down or discount any of your preferences as far as where you buy your materials but why would anyone want to go into a busy parking lot grab a cart go into a usually pretty busy store load that cart with whatever materials you need wait in a long line for checkout and then have to roll that cart to that same busy parking lot and then try to find a way to unload your cart into your vehicle or your trailer for the same price. For the same price, y'all. Don't think that McCoy's is any more expensive than Home Depot or Lowe's. Don't. Don't. Because they're not. And look, this guy will drive right over here and tilt that. And we're going to take all these 2x12s and just look how easy. And I'm just sitting here making a video. I can't get in trouble for that, can I? I don't guess a guy can get in trouble for telling you his opinion on something. That's just my opinion. Oh my God. There's my favorite guy right there. That's my favorite guy right there. He is my favorite guy. Last time he said, he goes, 
we can't take tips. He goes, a girl got fired for taking a tip. I said, she got fired for taking a tip? This is how dumb this girl is. This girl in the front at the register, a guy gave her a $10 tip. Okay, fine, you know what? I don't know why you would tip the girl on the inside because they don't really do any labor. You try to, I try to tip the guys outside. They don't wanna, they don't wanna take it, but you know, you insist sometimes because they're working here in the heat and the rain, and, you know, in the cold. And so I was gonna leave him a tip and he goes, we can't take it. I says, why not? And he goes, a girl on the inside took a $10 tip, uh, even though they were told not to. She took that $10 and they, her and her friend ordered pizza. They put that pizza in the break room, but they only invited certain people to go have a slice. <laughs> And some other girl in the front got mad and told on her. <laughs> and she lost her job. And I I laugh about that because is that not just a typical girl thing to do? <laughs> I don't mean taking the tip, but buying the pizza, but only inviting your friends to have a slice. She should have took that $10 tip and put it in her pocket and went and got her nails done. You know, this reminds me of something. I'm just talking about how that's my favorite guy here in the yard. I also have my favorite guy who delivers to us. You already know that, uh, Tracy, or is it Terry? <sighs> uh, so anyway, so the thing is, talking about your favorite guys, listen, uh, do you know that my dad, listen, I don't know if he still does, and if he does, and hope he's not mad at me for saying this, but my dad used to come here to McCoy's. He'd go to our local feed store, my dad would make rounds every single day. He'd even go by the bus barn, not because he needed anything, because those were his people. And he would go by and <laughs> just to hang out. And I, yeah. So it was always sweet to see dad trying to make his rounds. I don't think he does it anymore. I think now that he's doing videos, uh, I don't think that my dad gets out every day like he used to. But man, for the longest time, every single day, my dad would tell mom, I gotta go to the feed store this morning. I'm running by the McCoy's this morning. I'm gonna run by the bus barn this morning. And my mom never really questioned why. And uh, no, my dad would just go in and hang out and just hang out with his people. <laughs> and so I feel like I'm, if I'm not careful, I'm gonna be the same way. Now I'm buying stuff. I'm not just coming over here to hang out with my people. Okay, I'm buying stuff. But that was a funny connection I made to my dad. Have y'all ever heard that expression, sometimes you bite off more than you can chew? I don't think that I planned this out very smart because my trailer, you can already see my tires are beginning to kind of buckle. This is the last part of the load and these suckers here are heavy. So we're gonna try this. Let me go on the other side, buddy. And Oh, y'all keep y'all's fingers crossed. I can make this back. I only got about 15 miles, and it's not bumpy. But when you see your tire starting to buckle like that, that's scary. We just kind of push that one off on there. We're going to put these right on top if we can. All right, that's quite the load. That right there is going to get us started. That'll be several days worth of work right there. It's gonna be tough. These right here are gonna be hard to set. Those are eight by eights. It's gonna be tough to set those, but I'll use the tractor on one end and I'll lift up after I dig my hole. And I already have concrete at the house left over from my fencing project. And then of course we have our walls. All right, so that's what, let's see if we can get our trailer home safely be good to go all right so the secret to hauling heavy loads is not to make sharp turns because as you turn your trailer you put a lot of weight on the axles of the trailer and sometimes that weight can make your axles bow and that's the last thing that we want to do right now is to blow an axle and you don't want to hit holes you sure don't want to be hitting any holes like i just did you know it's at times like these when i think that maybe just doing a culvert would have been easier. But my friends, there's no adventure in that. There's no adventure in using a culvert. Not when you can go old school cattle guard. I will say 
that I never thought I would find myself having to back up the entire way down the Longhorn Luster driveway. My friends, this is not, this might be the hardest job of this entire experience is what I'm trying to do right here. And I have to do it because the driveway's out. The driveway is literally out. So there's no other way to get down it besides backing down it. And I don't know if I can do this. Look how close I am. This would be a lot easier with my tractor. I don't like those cows walking over that berm, that spillway right there. Where Texas at right there is very narrow, like six foot. And uh, I have this horrible fear that thing could cave off. That would be really bad. This is a whole lot easier. I can actually see what I'm doing here. I'm sorry you have to see me looking as wretched as I know that I do right now. But um, friends, I'm going to tell you, there's Trixie on the back of the, on the dirt pile. This might be the biggest, the, the largest undertaking that I've ever, this might be the greatest of all the things that I've, this is going to be a tough job. This is going to be a tough job. It's going to be tough, physically tough, because I don't really know exactly how I'm going to move that big timber into that hole. And then once I get into that hole, stand it up. You can't use a tractor to help you because there's nowhere to work. Or you can't work around the trailer on this side. You can't work around the other side because it's too wide. So we don't have that kind of equipment that, you know, the cranes and all that stuff that a lot of folks may have. So I'm going to really ask for your prayers on this one over here. I, uh, I have a plan. I have a really neat idea of how I think it's going to look when I'm all done. And I do think... I do, listen to me, I do think this is the best solution to all of the friendly folks who sent me tons of different culvert ideas. A culvert is only good for letting water come in one way and out the other. A culvert does nothing to address the water that's on top of it. And that's the problem that we're having, water coming down that hill behind me and down this hill behind me. With the cattle guard, it can all fall right through. With the culvert, rock, it has nowhere to go except for taking my rock off with it, which is what happened in this last rain. So I do think this is the best solution. I have been a part of building several cattle guards uh, in my day, mostly always just as the kind of the helper, the gopher. But uh, I'm excited. And I'm also nervous. And so I really could use your thoughts. And I will, I'll try to dialogue and video log every step of the way to let you guys know how it's coming. But it's going to be a week-long uh, process. I know it's going to be a week-long job, maybe even longer. Weather permitting, let's hope it's not too hot. And uh, we'll get this knocked out. And, and I think that you'll be proud of me. I hope that you'll be proud of me when it's over and said and done. And, um, all right, so, all right, start them prayers now, y'all. Start them prayers now, even though it won't, I won't actually start work till tomorrow. Well, heck, what do you call this? I've already started work. It may not be the actual work work, but I've already started. Let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester. <laughs> yeah, something like that.